What's up guys, welcome back to DCA. So what we're gonna do in this video is take a look at a group of different metrics, which are going to help us understand where Bitcoin and ultimately the entire crypto market are sitting at right now. So we all know that about two weeks ago at the end of March, we were sitting at around $48,000. We've since been rejected off some critical price levels and have come down to where we're sitting right now at sub 41,000. So we're gonna dive into these different metrics in the way that we always do using the data, understanding the market from a broad perspective in order to approach our investment strategy as long-term investors. So we're gonna start by just quickly looking at the DCA index risk model. If you're new to this channel, what this model is, is a machine learning algorithm model that I've converted into a trading view indicator that you can sign up for on the Discord channel. And essentially this model works to show us where market cycle peaks and bottoms occur. So you can see that every market cycle peak, every major market cycle peak in 2013, in 2017, at the end of 2017, and then again in 2021, the model has indicated once you get into these 80 and 90 and above ranges that you are very likely overbought and the market needs to pull back because the retail market has FOMO'd in at this point. And these tend to be when individuals start to take profits in mass. And you just see that at every single peak. And we saw it again in this 2021 cycle. Conversely, this model also is very good at telling us when we've likely come down too far. So we were oversold, the market is oversold. There's been capitulation, there's been fear, and now it's very likely a good time to step into the market. And in fact, if you take a look here, back in January, we got to one of the lowest points that the DCA index risk model has been. You know, there have only been several times when it's been lower than this. So the COVID capitulation event, back at the <clears throat> capitulation event in the end of 2018, as well as this very severe bear market with this capitulation event that occurred in January of 2015. We've since been trending up, but we're still, if you look here, we're sitting at a score of around 22 right now. So the way that we use this model on this channel, we dynamically dollar cost average. So when the model is above 50, this means that the market is approaching a heated point and we start to sell, but we do so progressively. So in other words, if we were above 50, 50 to 60 range, we'd sell maybe five to 10%. If we were above 60 up to 70, then you sell approximately 10 to 15%, et cetera. And you just do this all the way up the scale until you get to the highest levels. And then that's when you would get out of the asset. And then with regards to Bitcoin, start to move into altcoins. Because as we know, and historically we've seen, Bitcoin usually leads the way. And then the altcoins go on their massive runs after Bitcoin gets into these highest levels. So right now we are sitting down in one of these much lower levels. We're down at 23 and these tend to be the best times to buy. So just like we gradate our selling strategy, we also buy more as we move down into these lower levels. So personally, I use a weekly dollar cost averaging strategy. So when we're in this 40 to 50 range, I would just do one unit. Then when we move down into the 30 to 40 range, I would do 1.5 units and then two units, 2.5, and then finally three units if we ever get down to these lowest levels. So the next thing we're going to look at is just simply the usual moving averages, because I think these are going to be critical to continue watching. So we know that in the end of March, at the end of March, we hit this 200 week moving average. And we, we made a video at the time saying that, you know, we're in a precarious position right now because we've got above the 20 week moving average, which is what we use on this channel to indicate that the market is bullish. So if you go back historically, when we are above this 20 week moving average, the market is generally in a position where it's very bullish once you've held it as support. And that's going to be critical. You'll notice that every time this yellow line is the 20 week moving average. So I'll just hide this here. When we hold this 20 week moving average as support, we typically go on to make new all time highs. In 
In fact, if you look back here in August, we got above the 20-week moving average, held it as support here in September, then made a new all-time high. You saw it again here in April. We held it as support in September of 2020, made a new all-time high. Then you see back here during the 2018 cycle, we just did it over and over and over again. We held the 20-week moving average as support all the way up throughout the bull market. Conversely, when you drop below this 20-week moving average, it usually spells trouble to come. And if we just look here, we fall below the 20-week moving average, and then we go into a massive bear market. In fact, you can see that the 20-week acted as a significant resistance level all through 2018. Then again here, we fall below in May, and then we take several months to get back above finally getting above in August. That's when we hold it as support and then go on a run. Now you'll notice we've got above this 20 week moving average here in March at the end of March, but we were not able to hold it as support. We rode along it for about a week and then fell through. So, you know, typically when this happens, you don't need to go into some extended bear market, but it does typically take some time to get back above. So now we can look, like we said, at the 200 day moving average. And you can see that we got wedged right between these two important price levels. And so you had a bunch of individuals going on leverage. And this is ultimately what keeps happening to Bitcoin. In my opinion, it's a very strong reason why we don't see higher prices. Leverage traders go on leverage. The big time money players see that and they see when people are over leveraged and they liquidate them. And it happens over and over and over and over again. And it's, it, I mean, it's like clockwork. I find it hilarious that people keep doing it in spite of the fact that, you know, basically for over a year now, anytime people get over leveraged, they're just getting cleaned out, but people keep doing it. So, it, you know, individuals, the big money players are taking advantage of that. Now, if we go back to 2018 quickly, you can see that back in 2018, we did something very similar. We got, we finally got back above this 20 week and got wedged in between the 20 week moving average right here and 200 day moving average. And when we got rejected there, that's ultimately when we started going down to much lower prices. Now, the next thing I'd like to show you is this. So this is the logarithmic regression curve, which we've created on this channel. And what this is doing is combining the price log curves with the realized price log curves. So if you don't know what the realized price is, this is simply the average price at which Bitcoin has last moved on chain, okay? So this gives us, the realized price gives us a very good indication of what the average price of all holders is. So it's a very strong metric because in prior market cycles, the end of the bear market has came shortly after the price has fallen below the realized price. So this shows us the realized price is going to be this blue line, okay? so this blue with the fill in underneath of it. And then the orange is the actual price. And you can see that where has the end of the bear market came? And in each instance, we could just draw it out here. So you can see that once we fall below this realized price, so once we fall below this blue line, that's typically the end of the bear market. And then again here in 2019, and then again here in the COVID capitulation event. In each case, we fall below this realized price and that signals the ultimate capitulation event that sort of turns the market around. So what we've done on this image here, we've taken the logarithmic values of that curve and made them one half of this log curve. So ultimately, this gives us a very good idea of where the price of Bitcoin is heading over time. Then what we've done is extended these values out as far as you'd like. And you're able to come into the settings here in 
you come to settings and then you can select how far into the future you'd like to see. And this will tell you what the expected, for instance, upper band of the log curve is. And you can see that one year out, the max potential for Bitcoin, according to the logarithmic regression curve, is around $140,000. Now, let's say we went out two years. So we'll just say around 730 days. Now you can see that the max estimated upper level for Bitcoin is around $200,000. So this just sort of shows you that these elevated prices that you were hearing people predict throughout this bull market never really made sense because you wouldn't expect Bitcoin to all of a sudden exceed the log regression curves that we've seen in the past. So we were never really expecting Bitcoin to be able to get much above 70,000 or so. In fact, if you look here, the highest that predicted up until the end of the year, the highest predicted price for Bitcoin was around $90,000. But now we're starting to get the logarithmic regression curve is sort of starting to say now maybe we can get up to these $150,000, $200,000 prices. So perhaps not in this segment of the market cycle, but out into the future. So in 2023 or 2024, that's when we may be able to expect that price. So it's a more reasonable way to approach the market. Now, at the same time, we want to know where might the bottom be. So we can look at this log regression curve and you can see that in every market cycle, the bottom has fallen somewhere between this upper green band and this lower green band, okay? So where are those prices at right now? And if we just zoom in here, we can see that this upper green band currently, and remember, we're still far above this. So if we did come down to this lower band, it would probably be somewhere out here later in 2022. But right now, this upper band is at 22,000 and this lower portion is at 12,000. Now that doesn't mean that we're going down to those levels, but ultimately we want to know, mathematically speaking, where is an estimated lower range that Bitcoin may head to? And so this gives us a framework for estimating, you know, just how bad could things get if the market continued to trend down? And you never want to discount the fact that it could do that. And this just gives you an idea or an understanding of where it may go, at least so you're mentally prepared for where it may get to. Okay. So, you know, the market may ultimately do something like this. If it were to head down to these levels, you know, it could easily do something like that before it then starts to go up to these newer, higher highs. So if we look at this then, you know, and we say, let's suppose that it happened late in 2022 that we got down to these levels. Well, the upper band of this lower regression curve is actually at $30,000 late in 2022. And if you go into early 2023, then you're talking about $35,000. So even if we did head down to these levels, so then if you look out into say 2024, well, the upper portion of the lower regression curve. So this line here is actually all the way up at $50,000. Okay. So it's rising rapidly, which makes a lot of sense. So now the last thing that we can look at with regards to this regression curve would be the 200 week moving average. And why are we looking at that? Well, if we look back into prior cycles, you can see that historically the bottom of the market, where has it occurred? It's actually occurred right at the 200 week moving average. So you can see the bottom occurred right here in September of 2015. Then it occurred here in December of 2018. Then it occurred here at the COVID capitulation event. And where is that curve at right now? Well, I think not surprisingly, the 200 week moving average is riding right along this upper band of the lower regression curve. Okay. So, I mean, this is sort of a confluence of indicators. So our lower band of the log regression curve is telling us that, you know, this is where we're expecting the price may go to in a worst case scenario. And the 200 week moving average is agreeing with that. So it's riding right along this upper portion of this band. Now, the last thing I wanna show you, 
And these are going to be our, our major support and resistance levels. And what is this metric we're looking at here? This is the volume profile visible range. And this basically just shows us where have large amounts of volume been traded because these large amounts of volume are ultimately going to form your support levels. So we can see that we have a large quantity of trading going on right here between 40,000 all the way down to around 31, 32,000. And what does that mean? That means that we have a large quantity of support in between this level right here. And since we've been trading in this level for such a long time now, it's developed into quite a large level of support. So you have a massive quantity of the total Bitcoin supply sitting right in this level. In fact, perhaps more importantly, you have a lot of big money players who have stepped in in the low 30s and bought mass quantities of Bitcoin. So these individuals are not willing to sell the asset. They don't capitulate like short-term traders do. They don't capitulate. So you have these large time players sitting in this level with a large number of coins. And ultimately what it does, it creates a supply shock of sorts. Because as we come back down into these levels, they're not selling their coins and they have a ton of them. And ultimately what you're going to see is who's selling. They're going to be these guys up here because you have a bunch of short-term hands holding coins in this 40, this 41 up to around 44K level, as well as this 46 up to around 49K level. You have a lot of short-term hands who have bought in here and who have bought recently in uh, February, March, and now in April, who, you know, people, if you go on social media, everyone's like, we're going to the moon. I'm so bullish right now. And it's like, you know, those people essentially are calling tops over and over again. When those people start saying, I'm bullish, I'm bullish, I'm bullish, that's when you should probably be getting out in this market climate because ultimately the macro picture is ugly right now. It just is. No matter how you look at it, no matter what metrics you're using from the macro picture, it looks terrible right now. So people are going to take profits. We were up uh, around 30% from right there. And if you go back to some of the lower levels that we were at at the end of February, then we were up around 40%. So if you're up 40% in a terrible looking market, you're probably going to take some profits. So that's what we saw. And now anytime that you come into these red areas, you can see that we have a large number or a large amount of volume right in these levels. And these are short term holders in general. So you have a ton of short-term holders right in here and right in here. And these guys are going to very likely sell as we come back at their cost basis. Once you get to their cost basis, they just want to get out of the trade that they are now underwater on. So all these guys who bought right in here at this 47, 46, 45 level, they're underwater on their trade. So if we came back up, you're likely going to see them sell just to get out of that trade because it happens over and over again. We've been seeing it time and time again now. We've been getting stuck either at this 44.5 level or this 47, 48 level, okay? So I think that's going to continue to happen until things start to look better on the macro scale. So that's kind of what I'm looking at right now, guys. This is a broad picture at the price of Bitcoin. And at the end of the day, this is going to influence the entire crypto market. So if Bitcoin keeps trending down, I think your altcoins are going to trend down significantly more than Bitcoin. So this is why we suggest having a core position in Bitcoin and then Ethereum and then having less of a position in altcoins, especially when Bitcoin is below this 20 week moving average. Okay. So when we are below this 20 week moving average, you'll see the entire market is going to bleed and Bitcoin in general is going to bleed much less than a lot of the altcoins. Okay. So that's it for this one, guys. If you guys like this type of content, hit like and subscribe. You could head over to the Discord channel to sign up for the DCA index risk model. Like we said, it's a machine learning algorithm model which can help you identify market cycle peaks and bottoms. And until next time, as usual, see you.